So we're continuing our work with equivalent fractions today. You can pause here to have a look at our new success criteria and our key vocabulary. So here we have a diagram. We've got a bar split into different parts, okay? So remember that fractions are parts of a whole. And so here we have this split into 12 equal sized parts. So the idea is one quarter is how many pieces of 12? Well, if we think about the questions at the bottom, do we notice anything about the denominators? Well, yes, they're multiples of each other, aren't they? So if you think of what you do to 4 in terms of multiplication to get to 12, what do you multiply by? We multiply by 3. So we're going to do the same with our numerator. We have to make sure we do the same on top and on the bottom. So that means that 1 quarter will be 3 twelfths. Okay, so if I were to show 1 quarter of this shape, I would shade 3 parts of that whole. So now I have 3 out of 12. Okay, fine. The next one, 1 over something equals 3 over 6. Okay, again, so think, what did I do to 1 to get to 3? I multiplied by 3. Hmm, what multiplied by 3 equals 6? Well, it's 2, isn't it? 1 half equals 3 6. Okay, so if I were to color that in on this diagram, how many pieces would I color in? Well, we have 12 parts in total. We know that 3 out of 6 is half, as we've just seen in this diagram here. So that means that we'd have to have 6 pieces out of 12 colored in total. So I'll just call it on top so that you can understand that as well. So now that's showing 1 half or 3 sixths or 6 twelfths. Okay, let's go to a different color. Again, 3 quarters is something over 8. So again, what did I do here? I multiplied by 2, didn't I? Okay. And again, same here, I have to do the same on top. So 3 quarters is 6 eighths. If I wanted to show 3 quarters of this shape, hmm, well, if I know that 3 out of 4 can be represented as something over 12, hmm, 4 multiplied by 3 is 12, 3 multiplied by 3 is 12, I could use this diagram to get 9 pieces of 12. There we go, now I have 3 quarters shape here. Okay, I can do that. And then finally, 5 twelfths is something over 24. Hmm, think, what did I do here? Multiplied by two, I can do the same here, multiplied by two, so it's 10 24 so I could shade five pieces in, so let's say it could be one, two, three, four, five, okay? So there's a number of different ways in which you can use the same diagram to have a look at equivalent fractions. Again, the question's at the bottom. Do we notice anything about the, the denominators? Yes, like I said, they're multiples of each other, or you might say that, you know, the number on the right, the bigger number, is in the smaller number's times table. Does this pattern continue? Yeah, it could. It could continue. But the thing that we have to try and avoid is creating patterns where we're just multiplying the same number over and over again. So, for example, one half is three quarters, and then if we wanted to do, or sorry, one half is three quarters, one half is two quarters, but then if I had something like this, Now, if I'm just thinking of doubling, what if I had something like that? Well, I have to think, okay, what did I do to get to here? So it always has to come back to this original fraction to prove that that's also true. Okay, so that's something to be mindful of. Here, if I multiply the numerator by a number, what do I have to do to the denominator to do the equivalent? Is this always true? Okay, so let's say I have this number here. Okay, what did I do to get to here in terms of multiplication? I multiplied by 4. So I must do the same here. If you don't, the thing is, if you just say that this right here, what we've done is actually this. That's what it is. Because when we're multiplying with fractions, we go across, we multiply straight across. If I just said multiply by four, that's actually the same as this. Because four over one, four divided by one is four, which is a whole number. So then it would be four over four, which equals one. So it's not the same at all. We always have to make sure it's the same number on the top and the same number on the bottom. Um, I will give you a sample idea. Of, let's say I did this. Could you figure out what I multiplied by to get there? And then tell me what I multiply by to get this answer here. Here's another one I'll let you try on your own. Here you will find the fluency problem, for, or the question rather, for today to try to solve. It's one mark for each. Again, come back to the original fraction if you get a little stuck, especially with that second one. And here you'll find your reasoning and problem solving for today. Good luck.